Yo, what's up? We're Triple Fingers from Czechia. We're making new album. You should check that out pretty soon. And you're watching Local Bank Smoke Out. Fuck yeah! yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, right now we are joined with the anti hero! Hell yeah, hell yeah! What's up? What's up, dude? How are you? I am good, man. I am good. Uh, actually, currently on vacation from work, so I am... Where, where are you fantastic. vacationing at? We are actually getting ready to leave tomorrow morning for Florida. Oh, I, I was born and raised in Florida. What part, what part uh, of Florida? We're going to Destin. Okay, cool. I'm from uh, West Palm Beach. Oh, okay, cool. Very cool. For those that may not know you, can you do me a favor, introduce yourself, let me know whereabouts in the world you are, and of course, plug and promote anything you'd like. Of course. Well, uh, let me start by saying I am the anti-hero. I'm friendly as can be until you fuck with me. But uh, I, uh, I make music. I'm, I'm an independent artist coming to you out of southeastern New Mexico, West Texas area. Um, I'm right there on the border. I'm in a little town between the borders. Um, I am just a little independent project that started back when COVID started. I uh, is that where I the mask is that day. where the mask came about being incorporated yeah. in? Yes, but this portion of my mask wear actually came from that point in time. Um, I do have two other masks that I wear. One is just really for fun. It lights up, it flashes, it does all kinds of cool shit. Um, the other one is actually the physical representation of my brand. Um there was a movie that came out uh, that was based on a graphic novel called The Watchmen. Okay. And R Rorschach yep. is one of the heroes, yep. is one of the anti-heroes in that show. And just his way about him being so point blank, being so just down, not really even caring one bit what he had to say. He just said it. And that's the approach I take to my music is if it needs to be said, I'm going to say it. I love his mask too. Uh, in, in the when, movie, it like, it like, it's like ink blots and it just like rotates. Yes. Constantly. It's really yes. cool. I, I actually have a, a cloth mock-up of that mask. It's just really hard to see out of. No worries. How did you, how did you meet Caleb in the rest of a uh, so lunar? Well, uh, Caleb was actually a happy accident. Um, I met my wife about seven years ago, and she has known Caleb since they were in middle school. Well, my wife figured out pretty quickly that I was into music, and she was like, you've got to meet my bro. And at that time, he was just doing his MZ NZ thing, and... That was that was going pretty good for him, but he wasn't really messing with it too much. And then uh, we finally got together to hang out and start chilling, and we just clicked. Uh, as as two human beings do, we just we click. And he was like, "Dude, you've got a voice, man. You should start a project." And I'm like, "Bro, I can't." I can't start a project because I can't play any instruments. He goes, you have no idea what's at your fingertips, do you? Not a clue. And cool. he started showing me some stuff. We started messing around. And really, the antihero was born of that. Uh, just a conversation between Caleb and I. So and why, he why... was like, dude, I'll help. I'm sorry, you go. You got it. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, he was like, dude, why not? And I'm like, you why not? So why the anti-hero as the name? What what was the reasoning behind that? 
Um, that actually came about because while I was writing, I write from the standpoint of a, uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a mental health patient. Uh, I have bipolar one and ADHD and I use my music to kind of bring light on what I go through every day. And really it's, it comes down to antiheroes are everything you need, but everything you don't need at the same time. Like, yes, I needed that, but I didn't need it like that. And that's how I try to deliver my music is so that if you, if you walk away from one of my songs feeling like, okay, I really needed to hear that, but he could have been just a little bit gentler. I did what I can do. I can dig it. I can dig it for sure. So shout out to to your wife for introducing you to Caleb, essentially, which is uh which oh is, for real. That is awesome. When I was jamming your stuff earlier today, I feel like every song is like the opposite of the previous song I heard. How do you how do you go about like determining? I want to do this genre for this track versus. Because, like, what, like, example, if you just go through the, the top three, they're all very, very different. Um, so you're a man of many crafts as far as exploring different genres. But how do you how do you get into the vibe of what song, like, what, what genre you want to do that day? Well, really, that all starts with beat creation. Um, I'm sorry. My phone did something weird. You're good. <laughs> Really, it all starts with beat creation. Um, when I'm sitting down, I usually, I opened up GarageBand or BandLab. I, I use both on my phone. And I just kind of start messing around. I, I, I'll, I'll do a little something and it sounds good. Well, maybe if I add this to it, it'll sound. And then the song itself is just created. Like, you can look there, those top three, um, all different days, all different genres, but really, it's it's just, it, it's a matter of whatever the beat is saying to me that day. If I'm, if I'm working on a new backing track, and that that backing track really starts to speak to me, I may not even have lyrics for it yet. But I will finish that backing track, and you can bet that by the end of the day, I'm going to have something laid over top of it, because with the ADHD, I tend to hyper-focus, so when I get on one, I, I'm, I'm on it. I have ADHD, too, <laughs> so I totally relate. I relate for sure. Hell yeah. What do you do when, you, when you're not working on music? Just tell me some, some fun stuff you do on the side, just, just hobbies, maybe you collect stuff, uh... Obviously, you're going on vacation, um, so you're you're a traveler. Yes, I, I actually I I am a traveler. Um, I I do like to travel, um, but really, what I do in my spare time is behind this mask, I'm a coffee roaster. Okay. I, I am a I am a home coffee roaster. Um, you can probably hear my daughter sticking her head out the door there. <laughs> no worries. Uh, um, but yeah, I just recently took up the hobby of roasting coffee at home, and I've really found that it's relaxing. I enjoy it, and it's just it, it gives me a break from the day to day because you know I, I love my music, I, I do, and I love what I do with it, but I absolutely just need sometimes just need a break from everything so when i kick that coffee roaster on drop in about a quarter pound of beans and start roasting it, it's like heaven so is that are these like coffee beans that you've you've imported from like around the globe to try different recipes or and is there anything that yeah. makes makes your coffees like slightly different than just going to uh, like a Starbucks and getting coffee, like what, what, why the passion? How, where does the passion come from? Like, I'm curious. 
I have always been a coffee drinker. But as I've gotten older, I started noticing there are smaller brands on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And so I started testing those smaller brands to see if maybe I could do better than my average Folgers. Because I was just a Folgers guy for a long time. Gotcha. And when, when I dove into that world... Uh, again, the ADHD kicks in, the hyper focus hit, and all of a sudden, I'm down this rabbit hole of specialty coffees that I never knew existed. And then all of a sudden, I'm I'm somewhere in, in coffee roasting land on YouTube. I've joined a Facebook group, and I'm starting to ask questions. And next thing I know, my my mom gets me a coffee roaster for my birthday. And she goes, I know you're interested. Give it a shot. <laughs> it all just added like, up and lined and I, up. I get it. Yeah, everything just lined out perfect for it. So um, I got in the coffee group on Facebook. I asked around. I was like, you know, where can I buy good green coffee beans? I don't know what I'm doing. And everybody's like, that's cool. You know, the group was really awesome. They sent me some different directions. Um so wait, There's currently are, are are most coffee beans green? I don't think I've ever seen coffee green be coffee beans. Coffee beans are green until they're roasted. You don't see anything until the fi the final product. But before they hit that shelf, before they ever go go into any kind of uh, container for you to consume, they have to be put through a roasting process. Because they're unconsumable otherwise. Interesting. What is it just unconsumable because there's dirt and stuff on the beans still? Or that just gives it like the no, flavor it's, it's and it like causes the flavor but, to be released? It, it, roasting it causes all your flavors to be released. Um, that's what brings out, you know, you have some coffees that taste a little nutty, some coffees that taste a little fruity. The roasting process is what really brings those flavors out. Interesting. Um, Coffee is actually not much more than a plant that, that uh, sprouts berries, and the berries are delicious. I, I, I don't drink coffee very often, so I'm not very familiar with that world at all. But uh, I do want to jam some of your music and then do some trivia. Uh, did, did Lizzie sure. give, give you any insight to the trivia portion of the show? She sure did. Excellent. 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 Before we do the trivia, I need to do a couple things. I need to know uh, what movie or TV show, if you could pick one or the other, have you seen the most? And um, if you, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up trivia regarding that either movie or TV show. You get to pick though, one or the other, any movie, uh -huh. any TV show. I'm gonna look up trivia on that while we jam a song. Part two question is if someone has never heard your music before, what song would you prefer that they start off with? Hmm. Well, if someone has never heard my music before, then I wouldn't want to overstimulate, so I would probably go with Prisons off my first album. Prisons, okay. Off Mild Ways. Yes. Why that one? Does that one is that one just that one's always resonated with you when you I imagine when you said earlier when you kind of weren't into music and Caleb kind of brought you into that world, that was Prisons is one of the tracks that kind of just hit home in a different way. It did. It did. Um Prisons was probably one of the first songs I wrote um after high school that wasn't a very, very sad attempt. I grew up in East Tennessee. Everybody wanted me to be a country singer. I can't write country music. I, I can't. I've tried. It, it's happened like one time. I think my life, which is on, on my tracks, that's the only time it's happened. Um, but right after high school, 
I was unmedicated, undiagnosed, and my own brain felt like a prison. And so that's where prisons came from, is that's what it's like when your mind has you stuck and you can't get out of your own head. For sure. Uh, while we jam prisons, uh, did you think of a movie or TV show that you've seen so many times I can't stop you? Uh, probably the, sh the movie 300. Okay. Hell yeah. Sparta! Oh, yeah, dude. Sparta. All right, let me look at some I trivia on 300. We're going to jam prisons right now. All right, cool. Give me just a minute. Oh, right, you're good, man. No worries. Any hero. A little bit of an industrial vibe too, which I know is kind of like saloon art, one of saloon's like specialties. Uh, yeah, um, I kind of pull inspiration from everywhere because I, I grew up. My mom listened to pop radio, my dad listened to country radio, my uncles had a, a varying array of rock, uh, everything from Guns N' Roses to Metallica to Anthrax to Megadeth. I mean, and then my grandfather was really into older country, like uh, Hank Williams Sr. And my grandmother was into Southern Gospel. And that all just kind of fueled my passion for every genre of music. I just... My my playlists look like an ADHD worst nightmare. So you just put a whole bunch of genres in a blender and just say, and there you go. <laughs> Pretty much. Hell yeah. Pretty much. You got me. Well, I want to see if I can stump you on this 300 trivia, so here we go. Uh, in the movie 300, what two offerings does the Persian messenger ask of the Spartan king as a token of obedience? Water. Say again. Earth and water. That is correct. Give me a hell yeah. I have to do the hot sauce. In addition to whatever this is. Well done. Hi. Woo! This is ghost pepper wing sauce. It laid, on a, it laid on a shoey, so I got to do a shoey also. But, uh, whew, it does, it is a little spicy. So, well, let's just have some fun questions for a second. In in sure, Florida, sure. on your on your vacation that's coming up, why did you pick, uh, you said Augusta? Uh, Dustin. Oh, why, why there? What, what, what made you decide that's where the vacation should be? Um, I've got, a half brother in the area and it just it, it worked out absolutely too perfect that we could meet up uh him and i haven't seen each other in many 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 years um so <laughs> so we planned a meetup and dustin's kind of a tourist area i've never really been um so when my mother-in-law 
piped up and said, hey, we're going to Florida. Where do y'all want to go? I was like, well, let's go to Destin. And she was like, we'll look and see. I was like, okay. And next thing I knew, we were going to Destin. And that's cool because you get to see your family too. So, Yeah, I, I'm really excited about it. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's been over 30 years since I've even really seen him. 30 years. So it, yeah, wow. there, there's a lot of, there's a whole lot of family drama involved with that, that this ain't the place or time, but yeah, it's been 30 years. That'd be good to catch up. That's awesome. That is super cool. Oh yeah. What, what can we expect the the remainder of the year and early 2024 from you as far as either shows or, or singles coming out or just in general things that you want us to know about? Well, I do not have any shows lined up just yet. Um, I'm still working on getting equipment together so that I can perform a show properly. Um, but once I do that, I'll probably bust loose and start booking some smaller shows. But that's probably late 2024. As far as 2023 goes, I'm actually currently working on an EP with So Lunar. My boy Caleb is producing this EP for us. Um, we're we're really excited. We have a single off of that EP coming up here. I think that's due to release in August. We don't have an exact date yet, but we are looking at a push in August for that release. And this one is once again, it's typical me. Um, it's a completely different genre than I've done before. Um, I'm trying a more, a more hip hop style flow with some of what I'm doing. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not a rapper by any means, but I have been working on that aspect of the craft. And I feel like this is going to be, uh, a culmination of the work I've put in so far. Hell yeah. Very cool. Well, I've got time for a couple more questions, but I do, I, I, I got to stump you, bro. I got, I got to. So I got to try one more, one more 300 question. Oh. What okay. is the name of the character in 300 who is also the narrator of the entire movie? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Don't do that to me. The second one's always harder nope. than the first one. Yep. No, I know, I know this. I know this. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, but that's not the right name. Just toss that's something not out. The right name. Oh, I know it's wrong, but it's not F-E-L-T's. But go ahead. <laughs> it is Dilius. Dilios. Ah. Dilios. And that this guy that has the, the, the eye patch. The eye patch, yeah. Enjoy the All hot right. sauce, my friend. And uh, my final question for you is, you seem like a man of wisdom. I'm not sure why, but I'm just going to say it. You seem like a man of wisdom. After you do the hot sauce, while you're suffering, give me any form of, of band advice, music industry advice. Maybe there was a, a mistake you made in your career that you just don't want an artist that's just starting out to make this mistake. Always, 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 always be true to who you are. As a musician, as an artist, I, I don't care if you just make beats. If you have something that you love and you're passionate about it, it don't matter if 10 people hate it and one person loves it. You made a difference to one person. Always be true to yourself. I love that. That's great advice for sure. Well, dude, this is fun, man. I appreciate you uh, joining, kicking in. We look forward to the single in August. Safe travels to Florida. Have a blast hanging with Thank your brother you. that you haven't seen in, in three decades. That's incredible. I'm sure you guys will have many, many laughs. And I don't know if you're a beer drinker or not, but uh, maybe you guys will have a couple cold ones and just and just have a good old time, man. That, that is awesome. And shout out to your wife who introduced you to Caleb that started this whole music process for you. That's incredible. 
Yes, yes. Uh, big shout out. That woman has been everything to me the last seven years. That is awesome. Well, dude, uh, if we could, maybe down the road in, uh, you said late 2024, that's that's a little ways. So maybe early 2024, we can do a, a recap interview and then talk about some of the stuff we've been working on and uh, talk a little hey, more I'm 300. Down. I'm you, completely down. Hell yeah, awesome. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate you. And again, safe travels, man, to Florida. Thank you, man. Y'all have a good one. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, the Eddie Hero. Yeah, hell yeah. Cheers, brother. Thank you so much. Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band. Smokeout.